So when it comes to cord clamping, we like to wait at least five minutes. Typically, it's usually longer than that because we tend to want to wait for the placenta to fully come and tend to whatever other immediate things we might need to look at before really worrying about cutting the cord and clamping it. Uh, the reason why we like to delay the cord cutting for at least five minutes, if not longer, is because it does take several minutes for the blood from the placenta to move in back into the baby. This is the baby's blood. So by cutting, by waiting to cut the cord, we allow the baby to receive back all of their blood. Um, this gives them up to, that makes up about 30% of their total blood volume that is still remaining in the placenta typically at the time of birth. And this also allows them to have all of their um, their red blood cells, their plasma, and um, all of that nutrition and stuff like that that is inside of their blood back. And by doing this, we are helping prevent uh, issues with anemia. We're helping them have um, a better chance at their developmental processes. If they are uh, premature, for example, this actually has been shown to help reduce NICU stay and improve their ability to get back to breathing on their own if they had issues to begin with. So there's a lot of benefits to waiting for them to receive all their blood back. Um, and there's really no adverse effects to waiting on that process to happen. So what that looks like is we have baby right here with my umbilical cord. Um, this is gonna be my umbilical scissors. This will serve as my curved hemostat and this will pretend to be my cord uh, clamp and my sterile gauze. All of this stuff, we usually tend to have what we call a third stage kit. That's a sterilized kit that is just ready to go. We just kind of um, open it up and get into it so it's all there. So once the baby is born, the placenta is born, baby is uh, skin to skin, as long as there are no other complications or reasons why we need to cut the cord ahead of time, I would note that to the parents. Uh, we would wait. And once we see that the uh, umbilical cord doesn't have blood coursing through it anymore, it's usually a lot flatter, a lot more white. When we feel it, we can't feel blood pumping. So we know that it's got about as much as um, it's going to get out of there. So. I would, I always have my mask on, but make sure I have my mask on, don gloves, and go ahead and open my kit. If I have somebody that's assisting the cord cutting process, I would hand them the scissors so that they can be ready to go. I'd let them know that I'm going to get it ready to go. I'll show them where to cut and that they may want to get a couple snips in there because it is um, fairly tough or rubbery to get through. So uh, first thing I want to do is grab my cord clamp and I'm going to put the clamp right about here, maybe three quarter inch or so, something away where, we, where I have enough space in between here but not too long. And then I'm going to go ahead and get my hemostat and make sure that I leave a good amount of space there for the scissors to come through and cut. And I make sure that the curved hemostats are curved away from the baby. And then I get my gauze ready to go right here as I'm holding the space for them. And then I let them know to go ahead and cut right here. And, or I would go ahead and get a couple snips in there. Once that happens, then I would go ahead and uh, close the gauze, take the stat, move this stat side of the cord uh, and everything into the bowl with the placenta as I kind of hold pressure on the area that is still connected to the baby with the clamp and just kind of blot it and wait for that little bit of blood that tends to settle in the cord to be done bleeding. And then that's it, we're done. And this is all done typically with the baby on the birthing person's chest so that the baby stays warm and we can maintain that skin-to-skin -skin, uh, process. That's cord clamping.